Hello, everybody. This is Chromosco018, and this is going to be my thoughts on Orin High School Hustle Club Episode 4. I know it's been a while since I've done these, but I got two episodes recorded the other day, so I got 4 and 5 done. So, this is actually a blind reaction for this one because I remember, I know who Renge is, but I hadn't really watched the episode because I usually skip this one. Actually, there's a couple episodes that I would skip, so some of those would be blind. But essentially, Renge is obsessed with that game character, and the only real similarity between the character and Kyoya is that they look alike. That's the only thing. Because Kyoya is not like, was it Miyabi? Whatever the character's name is, but yeah, she's obsessed with the character to the point where she's got posters, dolls, freaking, I'm guessing, Photoshop pictures in frames. Like it's a real person, and I'm like, uh, obsessed with otaku much? Because she, she actually is an otaku. And, yeah, her dad comes back from a business trip. She actually lives in France, and he had met with Kyoya's family. And as soon as she saw Kyoya, she was like, like, oh, it's Miyabi, I gotta go! And she actually goes and transfers to Oran and leaves France behind. Much the annoyance and surprise of her father, because I don't think her father was, re was actually expecting her to do that. And I don't know exactly what the theme was supposed to be for that club visit that she joined up in. I don't know. If somebody could enlighten me, that'd be great. All I know is that they wore kimonos. That's it. And essentially, uh, when she shows up... Both the twins try and charm her, and uh, Tamaki tries to charm her. She calls Tamaki a phony prince, which gets him right in the heart on that one. <laughs> and to her credit, he kind of is, and yet he's not at the same time. I mean, the, pho the prince thing is just an act for his character as the prince, but he is actually a nice guy and would treat his, his lady just like that, essentially. So, yeah, it's kind of is, and yet kind of isn't at the same time. Anyway, as soon as she sees Kiyoyo, she claims that they're essentially engaged, and I'm like, like I said, obsessive much, because she just met the guy not two seconds ago, and yeah, Kiyoyo agrees that this is the first time he's actually met the woman, and they're not engaged. And while she's talking to him, she's imagining what Miyabi would say, and think, acting like it's kill you're gonna be saying. I'm like, uh, you don't have a very good idea when it comes to reality, lady, because even when I like a character, and I see someone who actually looks like the character, I'm not gonna be doing that. That's just silly. Anyway, uh, let's see. And she apparently appoints herself the manager for the host club, which actually ends up being recurring in the show. So it's not the one, this is not a one-time thing where she says it and then it doesn't have any merit on the rest of the show. Oh no, she does. And she apparently is trying to film a movie and has the character has the guys act really out of character for this, like Kyo uh Kikaru and Kairo being basketball stars, which I don't think they're athletic in any way. But they still obviously care about each other. And actually, the, uh, her thing of the twins being in their own little world, that actually kind of is how they are at first. Because essentially, the next episode talks about how they, were, they originally thought there was only two groups in the world. Themselves, and then everybody else. So it kind of makes sense. But the one who acts most out of character is Honey. She has Honey as the, essentially the thug. And I'm like, that is completely out of character for him, because he's never like that. Sure, Mori is still trying to keep him from doing things you know he's not supposed to, like eating too many sweets, for example. But, yeah, seeing Honey act like a tough little thug is just, it's just not Honey. Honey's a sweet little guy who has a love for sweets and stuffed animals. That's him, inside and out. He's not a little thug. Yes, he knows martial arts, and he's really good at it, but he's not... He's not that! 
that's when I mentioned the whole role playing thing. When you role play, you have to keep the characters in character. Now, if there's something that's slightly out of character, but it fits, then use it. But with that, that is something that you don't do. And she has Tamaki being, uh, what, the lowly prince? Or essentially, he's the idol, but he's uh, keeps to like keeps to himself. He's like a like a so like really uh, like an introvert, I guess you would say. I don't really know what the word would be, but yeah, that ki he actually is good at getting in character for something like that, which really good. That's actually good for Tamaki, and Haruhi actually agrees with that. And uh, Renge tries to hire some bad guys because every sto every story when it comes to a movie has to have some hmm, sorry some form of an antagonist whether it be like the action movies that clearly has a villain or something really subtle oh no these two are supposed to play characters that are part of the mafia and they get really offended at this because they say that don't judge us by essentially what our parents do and stuff like that don't judge us by appearances or what our parents do or something because they might not be like that and they get mad and they try and leave and they push Renge and Renge ends up getting knocked into a bunch of boards and stuff that were sitting up and her he jumps in and stop and you know keeps her safe but in the process one of her eye contacts slips out which hurts obviously and it causes her to start crying and when Tabaki comes up and sees this, well, that pisses him off. And he questions the guys, and they explain what happened, and her, he agrees. And by this point, Kilya smashes the lens of the camera. And tells Rengi that, you know, that she's caused enough trouble, you've got to leave. And Rengi is trying to figure out what the heck's going on, because Kilya would normally never do that in her eyes. At least, the Kilya that she knows is Miyabi. And Tamaki uh, says exactly what I was thinking, that that's not Kiyoya. And Haruhi tells Renge that you need to start getting to know people and getting to know them little by little instead of jumping to conclusions about or stereotyping them. And actually before this whole movie thing, she had baked some cookies for Kiyoya and Honey was about to bite into one, and Mori stops and says, No, that's bad for you. <laughs> and Rangi freaks out about it and starts chasing them. And I actually thought that was funny. I'm like, Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Never insult a lady's cooking. Unless you're going to follow it up with like constructive criticism, like how to make it better instead of worse. But no, <laughs> never do that. <laughs> Especially when they're doing it to impress somebody. No, that's a one way ticket to getting slapped or worse. Anyway, yeah, that's essentially what happens in this episode. I normally would skip this episode just because the characters act so out of character in this episode. I think that's the main reason why, because it's just so cringy to me. It just rub it essentially rubs me the wrong way, seeing the characters act so out of character like that. But yeah, it brings up some good points about how you shouldn't judge people based on how they look or stereotypes of how... You know, stereotypes on how they look or how their parents are or whatever. That's that's bad. And essentially, Renge ends up developing feelings for Hari. And the whole thing that Tamaki was okay with Renge being around Hari is that he thought that she would have a friend, a female friend, to make her more girly. Not an actual girlfriend. <laughs> and we know that Hari is a girl, but Renge don't know that. And I don't think she ever knows that from the whole show. From as far as I know. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. If you guys have anything you want to say about this episode, feel free to in the comment section. And I will see everybody next time.